this is Harry Gill and this is part 9 of concurrency. In part 7, we saw what problem we might face if the program is not written in a thread safe way. In part 8, we saw how to use atomic classes to achieve thread safety in the increment operation. Even though use of atomic classes works perfectly as far as the operation of counter variable are concerned, but that's pretty much where its power ends as well. Now let's say we have a requirement that we want to print all the variables in sequence. So this means that one thread not only should increment the variable, but also we want to print the number before the other threads can access it. In this video, we are going to look into how to get exclusive access to a block of code using the synchronized keyword. So we will start with this state, which we discussed in part seven in detail. If you haven't watched that video, please watch it to understand the problem. And we want to get to this state. In this, thread one is getting exclusive access to counter variable and allow thread two only when it's done with its all the operations that it needs to do, which includes printing of the variable as well. To achieve this, we will use synchronized block. The way we write synchronized block is it starts with the synchronized keyword and have an instance in the parentheses and then start and end of curly braces. Any code that goes within these curly braces can be accessed by one and only one thread at any given time. The instance we provide in the parentheses can be any object. It does not matter. And you do not have to worry how your program gets the log. That all happens internally. So the flow goes like this. Say thread one, when it hits this line of code, it acquires the log using the instance that we provided in the parentheses. And then it executes the code that we have written within those curly braces. That thread releases the log only when it hits the closing curly brace. And if this thread has the log, on the object, no other thread can acquire the lock. So they will have to wait until thread one releases the lock. So this is how synchronization is achieved using synchronized block. So in this case, we have two threads. We have a green thread and we have a purple thread. They both are running the code in parallel. Say green thread reaches the synchronized block first. It uses that instance that we provided in the parentheses to acquire the lock. When the green thread has a lock and other thread reaches them, they have to wait to get the lock. The green thread will release the lock only when it reaches the closing curly braces of the synchronized. And until it, that happens, the purple thread will keep on waiting for the lock. The purple thread will acquire the lock on the instance and then start executing that code within the block. And once the purple thread reaches to the end of the block, then it releases the lock for other threads to acquire it. So using this process, we will ensure that the code that is written within those curly braces is always run by one thread at any given point of time. And since the synchronized block is run sequentially within the threads, to improve the performance, this block should be as small as possible. Now let's jump into IntelliJ and modify our program to use synchronized block. So I'm going to create a package called part nine for this example. And I'll copy the class from part seven into part nine. And where we have defined the task, I'm going to use the synchronized keyword. And for our example, I'm going to use the service as the instance that the threads will get logged onto. Um, note that this can be any instance, you can create a separate new instance and use that. But in this case, I'm just using service. And now I will save and run the program. And as you see the output now, now all the numbers that we have will be printed in sequence. Now that is because the print statements is also synchronized. So until one thread increments and prints the value, it doesn't give access to, of the counter to a second thread. And that's the reason we see all the number in sequence. So what we have seen so far is a synchronized block. We can also create a synchronized methods. And for that, all we do is we use the synchronized keyword in the definition of the method. Now, whenever this method is called within a multi-threaded environment, 
any code that is written in this method will be executed in a synchronized way. That means only one thread will execute that method. The other threads will wait to get the lock. That's all I wanted to discuss. I hope this has cleared your synchronized block concept. If you have any question, please leave them in the comment. I will assure that I will respond to those questions. If you liked the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to get notified for my upcoming videos in the concurrency concept. Until next time, bye-bye.